Okay, we're going to do a quick video here explaining what coefficient of inbreeding is. In the last video, I showed you how to calculate this number. We figured out how to calculate it on banded E0483, and then we also figured out on his offspring when paired with Jody E0124. So you can see when we figured it up on Bandit himself, we got a 37.5. That's a pretty high coefficient of inbreeding, and that's a pretty undesirable amount. Um, what you want to aim for here is you want to aim for 5% or less. And when you hit 10% and above, that's when you start running into problems. Um, so what you're doing when you're making, when you're line breeding and inbreeding like this, you're compounding these recessive traits. So when we look at this and we cross over these lines, it's okay to attempt to compound those traits when we're line breeding because we have a goal in mind. So with Bandit, we may have been looking for his parents may have had some really nice trade. They may have had perfect snouts or the perfect weight or really nice marbling or something like that that made it really advantageous to cross him and it justified that 37.5% coefficient of inbreeding. But we want to make sure that there's a reason for it. If there's not a reason to get that high coefficient of inbreeding, then all you've done is inbred. And when you continue to inbreed pigs, you run into, or inbreeding any animal really, you run into some serious problems because you're compounding a lot of those recessive traits that also cause problems as well as your good ones. So we want to avoid that as often as possible. And if you accidentally make that mistake and you do that and there's not a really good animal that gets pulled out of that, make sure you put those into your cull, your cull pin. Um, with this individual, there are a lot of really nice traits. He shows a really nice phenotype, which is the physical attributes that are shown. And so what you have to look at then when you get an individual like that that has 37.5%, you want to do um, what they did here by crossing it with an individual that does not have near the number of related individuals. There were just these couple that crossed over. And so that knocked it down to that 3.125%. And that is well within that acceptable limit of under 5%. Um, this is the best to aim for is shoot for under 5%. If you can hit 0 or 1 to 2%, that's awesome. That is absolutely phenomenal and strive for it as often as possible. But know that if you're hitting under that 5%, you're good try to not go over 10% unless you are specifically aiming to compound a recessive trait. Um, that pretty well covers what coefficient of inbreeding is. One more little topic I would like to cover really quick that involves this is uh, popular sire syndrome. I see this individual quite often in pedigrees. I've looked at probably 50 or 60 different pedigrees now um, in the short time I've been looking at these and I see him on nearly 90 percent of the pedigrees that I look at. What can happen here when we have many of these is there's usually a good reason for it. Um, they're usually bred in because they have really really nice attributes um, which is good. They're like That needs cast out and put into our gene pool but we need to watch out for them because when that happens, we're also putting forth all of his worst attributes too, and we're spreading those throughout the entire gene pool. Um, these pigs here are out in Pennsylvania, um, at Mouse Creek Farm, um, and Kristen Boyer has done a good job of crossing these here to reduce that coefficient in these offspring. Um, and I see that everywhere that I've looked at pedigrees. I'm in southern Missouri, down by Springfield, and we have this exact same thing happening. We've got different lines, of course, um, but we have a lot of our individuals that hit at 10% and above on coefficient of inbreeding. 
So we need to be looking at these and not just our lines when we're choosing them. And we need to make sure that we're not picking a specific sire and using him all the time. We need to make sure that we're looking to bring in those lines that will give us that 0 and 1 and 2% uh, coefficient of inbreeding to continue to improve this breed. Um, I hope that these couple of videos have really helped you understand a couple of these base tenets on selecting the new stock for your farms. Hopefully with this information we'll be able to continue to move this breed forward. Good luck.